Venice 2 is an awesome cinema camera. It is mainly used for single camera shoots, but it can also be used in a multi-camera live production environment. Skahoy offers a lot of approaches to control this camera, but today we'll focus on RCP control and what we could call paintbox control with the inline 10. We are connected to the camera using Ethernet, in this case, with no need for serial connections or link, and that is a two-way communication with feedback from the camera. So if the camera operator changes the white balance locally, you will see it immediately on the RCP. When we look at the RCP, it may look a little bit limited in the features compared to what you normally see in broadcast cameras. But remember, this is a cinema camera where typically you'll record into RAW and then you'll do all your shading afterwards. So the RCP Pro is currently connected to this camera and it has three simple menus basically. The home menu, the exposure menu and the image menu. And as I go between these, you see uh, the content of the display and what these knobs do is changing, all right? If we look at other cameras, broadcast cameras, as I said, then typically we have multiple pages of these menu items, sometimes even a shift level inside a page. That can be like almost hundreds of parameters. In this case, we have a limited set. Let's look at what we have. Actually, you could have iris, but today the iris on this camera is controlled in a smart way because this is a prime lens, it's a mechanical lens, and there's no automated way to control this. Well, you do have the option of putting gears on it and anything you can connect to the uh, Venice camera, be it a um, actual motorized zoom lens or a, um, a motor gears, anything you can connect and the camera can control, you can also control from the RCP Pro. But today it is a manual mechanic prime lens. Let me just adjust it here real quick so that we have a nice target for our little recording. Okay, so what we did was we mapped down the ISO speed on the joystick. So you see the RCP Pro joystick, which is probably one of the best in, um, in any RCP in the world, that's at least what we believe, has a nice display on top and it shows you the ISO speed. You also see it stepping because the ISO is in the camera itself stepping. But what, I, what I'm showing you here is that we are, we are using that as a workaround to the fact that this lens has a manual iris on it and we do not have any motor gears. So in other videos, you'll see that the um, uh, the joystick here actually does control the iris and it's therefore not the main target of this video. I want to show you what is inside these menus because there are some, some cool things for this camera to, uh, to focus on. We do have uh, ND filters in it, so I can quickly just show you that I can enable ND filters. But let's move on to exposure because here we have the different shutter modes we can choose between. Uh, we, we have shutter speed that I can adjust here, but notice one thing, and that is if I change it over to continuous, I'm enabling a mode in the camera where shutter speed has an incredible resolution, um, as you will see in the display, while if I go back to step, we have uh, some preset values that is coming out of the camera. Again, this is a two-way communication, so the camera will tell me what shutter speeds are available. That is unknown to us, and it is, of course, integrated. So the experience on the RCP Pro is very close to a native experience with this camera. The ISO base actually gives me some uh, options on the range. So the ISO is currently uh, 3200. I can also adjust it on this encoder here. But if I change the base to high, that means now my ISO goes to 12,800 and not just um, 3200. So it is if it's permissible in your environment that you will allow this, you can uh, change the ISO base to, to give you that. Moving on to image, this is where we have uh, tint, for instance. If I um, enable that, you'll see that this changes slightly. Uh, how the um, color tone of the images. You'll also see it changes in fairly large steps, and that's because I have the uh, course mode enabled for this encoder. This is what allows me to go from the one end to the other real quick here. But if I press this knob and I move it just slowly, then I have much finer control over it, and I can even press and hold and reset back to zero. This is the white balance, and likewise, I can also move that in larger steps if I want. So. If I want to, and that is really fine grained control of, of white balance, by the way. So I can do that. And I can also press this button to auto trigger the white balance measurements. And it's in this case going back to 4300. 
Uh, other features I want to show is uh, if I press the shift key, I have access to all the user buttons on the camera. So I can actually trigger whatever you have programmed into the user buttons on the camera from the RCP. That's a pretty cool thing as well. And also, if you look at this top row, it's a little hidden on an RCP because normally these are dedicated to one camera at a time. But this is actually a camera selector. And we'll look at that just shortly in the software that runs inside the RCP. So you can see how we can add multiple cameras if I wanted to. This is also where this text is coming from, the identification of the camera and why you can set a tally um, uh, colors as well or map that up with the vision mixing system if you wanted to. All right, so that was a little bit white balance, exposure settings we can control, etc. Uh, we have uh, buttons here that will allow you to open and also navigate the on-screen menu on the camera. And you can use this key to, uh, to navigate around in that. Um, on the inline 10, we have basically the same settings. But before we get to that, the paint box control, I want to kind of open your eyes to where this could be useful. So, for instance, when Sony recorded a commercial for their Burano camera, they used an inline 10 in a helicopter to control the camera in the field. So it is probably not the most practical thing to hold an RCP in the field and use an RCP joystick. That's what you want to do in a, a closed environment, in an OB truck with a screen in front of you where, you know, and, and you, you have more space for, for this unit, which is designed for installation. But the inline 10 would be great as a handheld device, actually. And it has still buttons for camera control. So here you can have multiple cameras lined up. You also have menus here and you see that is the ISO speed. That is the ND filters. This is your white balance, your tint. And if we move by pressing the upper edge on this button, we are cycling through options that you have also seen in this menu. So essentially, it has all the features that you also found here on the RCP broken out here. But there were also a few things that I think is a little bit unique over here. It's just that we mapped it down on it. It's not that you couldn't have it here. But one of them is the ID of the camera, currently A, and also the color assigned to the camera. And I'm being told that these identifications, color and letter is something you can set in the camera and bring out on the display here and that would change if we had multiple cameras added to it. You can also start stop recording from this encoder in case you had a recording media in the product. So those things are possible and of course there was a little uh, playback menu there as well if you wanted to playback your recorded clips. All brought out on the paint control here in case you wanted to use it in that way. Now the screen you're looking at right here is coming out of the RCP Pro. So this is essentially, and by the way, these two are today basically run on the same device. So the RCP Pro is being the, the host of this panel, which is thereby sharing a connection to the camera. So it's just for practical reasons and because then I have a chance to show you that if I move around in the menu, it is reflected here in our simulation screen. So there's a software entry into all the features of the RCP and you can even use this to to also manipulate things. You can change the um, type of shutter speed um, and uh, or the shutter speed mode. You can change the values on it. You can uh, also change fine course mode if you want. All of these things can be adjusted from the UI of Reactor, the software running on the RCP Pro. And if we go to the home screen, this is where you see the ability to add more cameras if you want. The, the camera we are currently connected to, this Venice 2, is on this IP address, did, uh, if I had multiple Sony cameras, not only Venice 2s, but it could also be other cameras, even other brands, I would add them over here and I could simply add those cameras using this uh, function where I can either pick the ones that I have already um, installed or I can discover devices on my network. Or I can add manually from the hundreds of cameras that we are already supporting inside of Reactor. And that is actually true for Inline 10 and RCP Pro. So they are sort of separate. They have their separate configurations. You could have a, another mix of cameras on Inline 10 if you wanted to, uh, then on the RCP Pro, all up to you. You could have exactly the same if you wanted. <clears throat> That's just whatever you choose. It's really exciting being a part of enabling these wonderful cinematic cameras in live production. And if you like this videos and you would like to see more of this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe this video. You can also follow us on social media channels and reach out to our sales and support team if you want to get in touch with us. There are links in the description for this video. Thank you for watching.